Andy Buss here, aka Hunter Fish, talking to you about catching smallmouth bass in windy conditions during the fall, specifically with soft plastics, two baits, and my favorite monkey punch. Before I go on, I should tell you that I'm, I'm making this a habit now in my videos, but all the tackle used in my videos, I'm going to post links to them in the description. So if you're curious about where to get this or that or rods, reels, tackle, line, I'll put it in the description. And if I don't put something in there that you want to know about, please make a comment. Cause you're on camera, John. Open lake, small lake. This footage was taken on Houghton Lake in northern Michigan. Uh, specifically, we were fishing rock beds or shell beds, I should say rock piles or shell beds, in some really extreme wind. We caught our fish that day on tubes and Loch Ness Lures Monkey Punch. I can tell you that day we were using uh, dark colored, natural colors, green pumpkin. Uh, Loch Ness Lures Monkey Punch was what they call uh, green pumpkin magic. And the tube by Extreme Bass Tackle uh, is a green pumpkin with purple flake. Now normally, 90% of the time, I'm going to use a quarter ounce weight on both baits. But on this day, with that wind, I was throwing 3 eighths ounce on both of them to keep it on the bottom. Look how he ate it too. I'm not worried about your camera. You know, at least I'm not building. I let the wind dictate my action with these baits most of the time. And when it's really windy, as it was on this day, I move my rod an awful lot. Now I do, if you pay close attention, I have a lot of slack in my line as I'm moving it a bunch. So while it may look like I'm pumping up two or three feet at a time each time I stroke it or uh, rip my rod, no, it's, it's actually probably just a few inches. Those waves are moving my line and my bait so much, it's moving these tails or these tentacles. I doing all the action for me. I got that heavier weight to keep it on the bottom, so really they're doing a lot of this as I'm scooting it along down there on the bottom. I don't have to do a lot of action with it. Now if it's calm out, if it's not as windy like it was in this day, I do very little action. A lot of, I don't want to call it dead sticking, but crawling and dragging it across the bottom. But on this day, I try to match my action of the baits with the weather and the wind specifically. Some people are really good at working a tube along the bottom of the bait casting rod. I, I'm just not that person. I, I've tried it. I'm just not comfortable doing it yet. So as you see in the video, using a spinning rod. Uh, I prefer a medium heavy rod, maybe a medium action rod. If it's a stiff medium action rod, I want a fast tip on the end to get a really long cast. I'm using 80, excuse me, not 80, no way, 8 pound fluorocarbon line. 90% of the time. I might move up to 10 if it's uh, really rough or a lot of rocks and it's hard structure. Or I might even drop it down to 6 if it's ultra clear water. But 90% of the time it's 8 pound fluorocarbon line. I have a medium heavy rod here by Yoder's Custom Rods. And I have a, what do you call it here, a Stratic 2500 by Shimano. And the, the what I was doing out there is casting as far as I could into the wind and working it back towards the wind. The reason I find that important is I believe most fish are looking into the wind because that's where the wind is blowing their bait. All the fish we caught in this video were on rocks and shell beds that we had located with either side imaging or feeling a heavy tube along the bottom and noticing that something is hard down there and not soft because there's a lot of sand out there and a lot of sand grass. 
other structure to consider besides rocks would be any kind of point that the wind is blowing on. It doesn't really matter if it's a 20 foot point or a five foot point or even a two foot deep point. Anytime you can find sporadic weeds in or around some sand, that is a dynamite combination. Or if you have a nice gradual flat with some rocks, weeds spread out across it, just kind of gradual, if it's a nice big flat, uh, with the wind blowing on it, ooh, that can really bring those smallmouth up as well. Sometimes these fish aren't in the mood to be looking for crawdads on the bottom with the tube and the monkey punch being especially effective. Other baits to consider in these situations would be a jerk bait for sure. Check out my Don Watts video on that. An Alabama rig can be really good. Last year, Clay Sterling and I caught nearly a 22 pound bag of smallmouth bass in extreme wind on the St. Joe River to win a tournament. You can check out that video as well. And rattle traps are another excellent choice for smallmouth bass. Out last fall with Mark Farber, had a great time fishing with him, catching a combination of largemouth and smallmouth bass. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. Click on that little get notifications tab. I'd love it if you liked the video and maybe make a comment or two. Ask me questions. What else can I give? What other information can I provide for you in our, my YouTube channel? Thanks for tuning in. Until the next time. We'll see you on the water.